art challenge with Miss Halliday. Hi everyone. Today is going to be our, our last um, lesson together before summer break. So let's try to make it really special. We are going to be working with watercolor, which is one of my favorite art mediums. So I'm going to have you create a picture on paper of something that you'd like to be working with. I worked with different flowers, which I went through my um, flower books and used them as references. And you can also go online to look at images that you're looking for. So I have birds and flowers. So you really can pick any anything to draw that you'd like. And then we're gonna turn it into watercolor. If you don't have watercolor, you can just use paper and draw it out and crayons or colored pencils or markers to color it in instead. If you're doing watercolor, you would need a cup with water, some paper towels, a brush or brushes, and this is my watercolor set. You can have a smaller one that can be purchased at um, Dollar Tree or any art store. And this one is a new one that I haven't used yet that has metallic, it's um, metallic watercolor. So it means they're gonna be shinier kind of have a sparkle and a gleam to them. And something else that I had, because I really love watercolor, are these watercolor brush pens, which are neat. So any type of watercolor would work. So I'd like you to, on your paper, decide what theme you're gonna be working with and if you need to research um, with books you have around the house or looking up online to see what the animal or the image that you're trying to work with is, you can stop this video and draw out what you'd like. So I'd prefer that you come up with your own rather than just copying mine so it's your own original idea. It's okay to also do flowers and birds, but try to not have them just like mine. When you're ready, you're going to be finding a brush and dipping it in the water. And then you're going to be choosing any color that you like to start with. And with my flower here, I'm going to gently place the color purple that I chose down the more paint you use, the bolder of a color is going to come out. What I really like doing with watercolor is blending. So with purple, blues are going to blend really nicely in. So I'm going to add some blues. You don't need a ton of water. It kind of spreads. Red can also really, really look nice. And this is starting to create new colors rather than using the straight color. So I think it looks a lot more interesting. I'm gonna go into my metallics, which are gonna be a bit lighter, but they're gonna give that more iridescent look to them, a little bit of a sparkle. It's okay if the watercolor goes outside the edges a little bit. You can just work with it. If you blend um, three colors that are very different, you're gonna get a brown color. So if you're not looking to create brown, try to use colors that are similar, like oranges and yellows, purples and blues, greens and blues. 
In the center, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow here. And if you're trying to do a close to perfect eye of an animal, it's best to leave some drying time before you add that eye or it's all going to start blending together. So I'm applying different colors. and filling in my flower. I like to work with the images first and then give drying time or the next day, go back and do the background, which is behind the images. So they don't all blend together. It's also okay to leave some white space you don't have to fill in every part of your image. You can leave some white. I'm going to let this one dry, dry a little bit so I can do the center parts of the flower and it doesn't all blend together. So now I'm going to go to a leaf. Rather than using one green, you could mix green and yellow together to make your own green or green and blue to make a deeper green. So I'm going to first apply some of my different greens. Like that. And then I could go over it with a little bit of yellow and drop the color inside. Notice I'm rinsing off by swirling my brush in the water gently. And if I have too much water, I use my paper towel like this, or I can test that it cleaned off well enough by seeing if there's any color left on my paper towel. Because when you go into different colors without rinsing, it's gonna change that color to make it more of a muddy brown color. So I'm adding to my leaves and part of, part of my leaf could just become very light, like it's being highlighted by the sun. Like that. And I can always come back to this part if I feel like it's too wet and add more later. I'm going to do these small flowers up here. I'm going to drop a little bit of a different shade of a pink inside. Here's a deeper, more magenta pink. I'm actually going to put a little bit of orange in with my pink, see what happens with that. Those colors look really nice together. I'm going to let that dry and then go in for my center part. Now I talked to you about the watercolor brush pens. I'm going to show you how those come out. So these look like a marker and the tip looks like that. So I'm going to dip it into water and I'm going to test it on my paper towel. You can see the color coming out and it gives you a nice fine line. I'm going to go back to my leaves, try to add, add a little bit of lines inside. You can see here it 
this kind of comes out like it's a marker, so it's nice and thin. And on the yellow part, I might pick an orange. And then I wet that, test down my paper towel, and then you can add some lines in, and they're really bright and very accurate with the watercolor pens. If you don't have some of these materials and you like them, maybe it's something you could get over the summer and try some artwork and experiment with it. I'm next going to move to this hibiscus flower right here. This one I'm going to make pink here on, on the inside of the petals. And I'm going to have a bluish green color, which is like a teal. The colors you pick don't have to be realistic. They can be made up, creative. It doesn't have to be just like the real thing. I have a different shade of blue. That adds more pink. And I'm going to add a little bit of purple. So it really is starting to spread and blend and make new pretty colors. Now that my flowers over here are drying a bit, I'm going to show you a bird. This one happens to be a hummingbird. And I know that on some hummingbirds, they have a little bit of green. So I'm going to add a little bit of green by the neck of the hummingbird. And that's a little light. I kind of want it darker. So I'm going to go to a darker green. Put a little bit of that inside. And I'm going to have the green blend into a yellow. With the bird, since it's small, I want to be working with a small brush and try to be careful and gentle with it. You don't want to smash the brush down so the bristles um, look like they're having a bad hair day. You want to be gentle with the brush and have it keep a nice fine point. Next, I'm going to go with some red. And when red hits yellow, we'll see what happens. So it's, it starts to sort of make an orange color. If you have too much water, you can dry your brush off on the paper towel, put your brush inside, and it starts to pick up some of that water if you have too much. And I'm going to add a little bit of green to the wings. And a little bit of pink by the belly, a pinkish purple. To do the eye, like I talked about before, definitely let this area dry before I try to do the eye or the beak because they're small areas. And if it's wet on wet, it can really blend 
um, where you don't want it to be very blended. My, um, my brush pens would be a great idea for the eyes and the beak since they're nice and thin. I'm going to go back to my flower over here and I'm going to use some of my brush pens to do the center which I'm going to make orange. Kind of like little dots here. I'm just going to make the center part of the flower stick out by outlining it. And then I'm going to go into areas and give it a little color pop of this orange over my pencil lines so that I can still see. I'm seeing my metallic paint causing a bit of glimmer, which is really pretty. That's, that's what I wanted to happen. All right, I'm gonna go back in and add a little bit more paint closer to the center of the flower because I have that white gap. And I like it a little bit closer. So I'm gonna go back and find my pink, pinkish purple, just bringing it a little bit more to the center. Remember if it's too much water, press your brush down, starts to soak up. that. So back to my hummingbird. For the tail, I'm going to have some black. And in the wings too. And I'm going to go over it with some blue, a deep royal blue. Looks like I have a little bit too much here, so I'm going to try to soak that up and spread it around. And my second wing is right behind the first one. Like that. For the head, I'm going to create that green. And it's okay if I get inside the eye right now because I'm going to let this dry and then create the eye later when it's nice and dry. So I hope you have fun working with watercolor and you can email me your artwork so I can check it out. I'd love to see it. Since this is our last video, I wanted you to know that I'm going to miss you and I hope you have a great summer and you keep up creating and making different things um, with art. And next school year, um, we'll see each other again. So have a great summer. I miss you. And, um, and I'll see you when you go back to school. Goodbye.